Phytoperiodism is the ability of plants to time their growth and reproduction to the seasons. And their reproduction mainly refers to their growth of flowers and when their flowers are fertilised fruit. And the other seasonal activity is when they grow in spring and summer and in winter they tend to drop their leaves. Now there's three types of plants that all respond differently to day and night. Uh, we've got short day plants and they flower late in summer or autumn when the day length is starting to get shorter and the night longer. We've also got long day plants, which is what you're probably more familiar with. Uh, long day plants flower in spring and summer when the day length is starting to get longer and the nights are starting to get shorter. We've also got day neutral plants. They don't seem to be affected much by the length of the day and night, uh, but temperature may affect them. Now in this rest of this presentation we're going to be looking really at day long day plants because they're what we're most familiar with. So how do they do it? How do they respond to the length of the day and night? Well inside every plant there are lots of chemicals uh, but there are also some that are light sensitive uh, that are affected by the quantity and quality of light that they receive mainly in the leaves. Um, plants also have an internal clock or circadian clock which helps time things and some plants also respond to heat. So there's a ways, a number of ways that plants actually respond to uh, the environment. But we're looking at light. Now we know that they can detect the quantity, quality and the duration of the light. Of course they do that in the leaves with a variety of different pigments. It's very important in the temperate regions where there's a distinct summer, autumn, winter and spring for plants to be able to detect and respond to the environment. Uh, in winter there's not a lot of um, energy for the plants because it's colder and they, their chemical reactions slow down because of the low temperatures. So it's silly for the plants to um, be trying to grow at that time, expending a lot of energy. And um, they can also get frozen which causes cell damage in the leaves. So in very strong temperate regions, plants need to have a response to the environment, and to the weather. Uh, it's also important for them to time their reproductive behaviour when insects are active. There's no point in flowering when, um, in the middle of winter if there's very few insects around. They're all dormant under the ground or in uh, other forms rather than the active form. Uh, the, the flowers are very unlikely to be fertilised only by wind or chance rather than by insects. So that would be silly for a tree to try and reproduce at that time. Plants also exhibit other responses to light which we're not going to look at. Things like phototropism where they grow towards the light. They grow towards the light. That's regulated by other chemicals, uh, other hormones. And there's also growth responses due to the similar chemicals we're looking at today where plants will actually grow, uh, if they're in poor light, will grow quicker to try and reach the light. Now the main chemicals we're going to look at are phytochromes. <coughs> Now phytochromes are pigments and they're proteins uh, which are made by the plants themselves. Uh, and they're the chemicals they use to detect the light and they particularly respond to red light. Now there are many different types of phytochrome, A, B, C and D etc. The one we're going to look at is phytochrome B which seems to be the dominant one and the one most involved in photoperiodism. Now phytochrome B is the main, as I said, the main one and it is the one that determines a plant's response to the seasons and phytochromes actually change form when they absorb the light so they're produced in one form in the darkness and when they are um, when light touches them through the leaves they actually change their shape to a different shape even though they're the same chemical and what happens during the day the phytochromes up in the leaves and the shape changes from the PR form on the left the presence of light it changes to the PFR form, which is on the right. At night time, the opposite occurs. The phytochrome changes shape back to the old one. So the PFR on the right changes back to the PR form. Now because of this, the actual concentration of the different forms of phytochrome will vary depending on the day and the night. As you'll see here on the left, you've got a, a reservoir of the PR form, like a container filling up. 
On the right, you've got a reservoir or container of the PFR form. So over time, and you've got the arrows moving between, you can see during the night, you've got the PFR changing to the PR, and at day, you've got the PR changing to the PFR. And of course, the concentration will vary in the, in the tree. Trees are large and plants are large, I guess, compared to the amount of chemical that's produced. So that at any one time, there'll be both forms in the tree, but in different concentrations. Now, if we have a short day and a long night, at night time, because the night is long, there'll be a long period of time for the PFR form to change into the PR type. And as you'll see there, there's a large arrow showing that there's a large change. And you'll see that the quantity of PFR, the white box is small, the quantity of PR is quite large. And then because there's a short day, we've got a small sun there instead of a moon. And we've got a short arrow going from the brown PFR form to the white, sorry, the brown PR form to the white PFR form. So basically we've got that continual cycle happening. Large change from right to left, small change from left to right. Now the PFR form of the phytochrome B is the active form. That means it's the form of the chemical which causes all the changes in the plants. It's the one, the hormone that sets off different changes for the plant. Now, when we have short days and long nights, um, this is when we're approaching winter for long day plants, which all this is about, long day plants. We're approaching winter, so it's probably autumn. So that, that dropping quantity of PFR triggers plants, uh, leaves to drop off. That's the particular plants that respond in that way. It also triggers responses in the tree or the plant to go into dormancy. This is where they go to sleep, they stop growing, they often start mechanisms which stop, uh, which protect them from freezing temperatures uh, because when a uh, plant would freeze, it the cells actually get ruptured and, and that kills the cells, which would kill a plant. So they have special mechanisms which they employ to stop themselves from getting frozen. Now, after winter is over, the reverse happens. As you see, the sun gets larger is indicating there's more light, longer days, and the moon is getting smaller. So we have uh, a large arrow going from the PR form to the PFR form, and which is the white, the brown to the white, and we have a small arrow going from white to brown from the PFR form to the PR form. So here we have the concentration of the PFR form increasing in the tree, while the PR tends to reduce and become smaller. Now this increase in the PFR, which is the active form of the phytochrome, triggers the flowering and growth in the, in the plant. So the plant will start to bud and grow because it knows that summer, spring and summer are here and it's a good time to grow because it's going to be warm as well. And there's going to be insects around for flowering so it starts to trigger the growth of, of flowers. Interestingly, if long day and short day plants are kept in conditions that, are, that have equal day and night, if you were to put them in a room and have a light with a timer, which would give them exactly 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, they will eventually flower. And you can actually play with the length of the day and the night to see what would happen. Now, scientists have done this and found that plants will still um, go through their uh, rhythms of flowering and growth and dropping leaves and going into dormancy, even if the light is kept the same or if they play with different amounts of light. What actually happens is the quantity and quality of the light will, will delay or, or advance the, the flowering or the growth of the tree, but the tree will still go through it anyway, even if it's kept in constant conditions. And that indicates that the tree or the plant has a clock inside that is um, that regulates a plant as well. So there's two things happening. We've got the plant responding to the light, the length of the day and night. And we've also got an internal clock which times things as well. So those both those things are occurring to help the plant respond to the seasons. And it seems that the phytochrome, as well as triggering things in the plant, also helps to keep the clock in time with the environment. No point having the clock running too fast or too slow, so it helps to regulate that as well. It's actually much more complicated than this. This is a simple explanation just to get you started with exploring how photoperiodism actually works.
The biologists spend a lot of time and money and resources investigating these things many years of, of research. So there's much more to be discovered. <laughs>